The measure by which you say stories come it tells me how badly you want the stories. Story, stories. Stories, stories. Stories, stories. Stories, stories. Oh, now we're going to do it in my native language of Swahili. If I say Haditi, Haditi, you say Haditi Njo. Can you say Haditi Njo? Haditi Njo. Haditi Haditi. Haditi Njo. This table wants a story. This table. Can you believe me? If I say, can I tell you a story? I want you to say, get on with it. <laughs> can I tell you a story? Get on with it. Can I tell you a story? Get on with it. I want you to get mad. Like, go get on with it. Stop wasting our time. With story. Throw a napkin at me. Can I tell you a story? Can I tell you a story? Get mad. Say, get on with it. Can I tell you a story? Can you tell you something at me? Say, get on with it. Can I tell you a story? Only Sean wants a story. Can I tell you a story? Can I tell you a story? In our culture, when we tell story, if the storyteller is not sweating, he did not tell a good story. That's why I ask you to throw napkins at me, because I'm going to be sweating here telling you a story. Knives are coming next story. Yes, can I tell you a story? Are you ready for a story? Get on with it already. Story. Get on with it. My story today comes from North Africa. We are going to take you on a journey of our brothers in Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, and Libya. Once upon a time, there was a camel driver. Uh, this camel driver was leading his caravan uh, from his village uh, to another village uh, to Timbuktu to do business. As he came across this other village, he saw a walled orchard. Over that walled orchard, he saw a, 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 a peach tree. On one of the branches of the peach tree were uh, three uh, juicy, uh, succulent Peaches, so juicy and ripe uh, that juices were dropping from the peaches onto the ground and ants were scouring from all over uh, to enjoy this nectar. And the camel driver, he got gripped with so much envy and he said, Oh God, how can life be so unfair that I have to leave my wife and my son at home? And, and, and drive these camels on the hot desert. When some people, they sit at home under orchard tree with their sons and daughters. Inside uh, the orchard was the orchard owner. He was sitting underneath the peach tree, looking outside through the gates, and he saw the caravans and said, Oh God, how can life be so unfair that I have to sit here under this peach tree? While uh, some people have the luxury of seeing and enjoying this beautiful country of ours, how can life be so unfair? While the two men were gripped in their misery, the lead camel walked close enough to the wall and stretched his leg and started eating the three peaches. When the orchard owner saw this, he was great with so much anger. He took a stone and he threw it and launched it towards the camel. And he hit the camel on the head. And the camel dropped dead. When the camel driver saw his lead camel drop dead, he was great with so much anger. He see, he picked up the same stone and he launched it towards the orchard owner. But the orchard owner did not move out fast enough. He hit him on the temple. He fell down, dead. He did not mean to kill the orchard owner. He looked around to see if anybody had seen him. And he took a knife and he cut the rope that tied the dead camel onto the second camel. And now he met the second camel uh, to be the lead camel. And he said, hak, tak, tak, let's go, let's go. And he said, to scamp away. He said, to scamp away as fast as he could. But little did he know that the two sons of the orchard owner had seen him. And they came out uh, flying from the gates. 
rain and put hands on him and say, murderer, murderer, you have killed our father. You have killed our father. You are a murderer. And he said, no, I'm sorry. I did not mean to kill your father. It was an accident. He killed my lead couple. I'm so sorry. Please, take gold money. Here is gold. He took out gold from his and said, no, we don't want your gold money. Life for life, blood for blood, death for death. You have killed our father. We will never be able to enjoy baklava at the marketplace with our father. We will never be able to enjoy tea and great wine with our father anymore. Life for life, blood for blood, death for death. And the great commotion in the streets, people gathered and they said, take him to the judge. Take him to the judge. And they pushed him and they jostled him and dragged him all the way to the judge. The judge, who was eating lunch, came out. He washed his hands and he threw the towel and said, what is the commotion going on here? He said, and the two sons, this two sons of the orchard man said, this man is a murderer. He has killed our father. And the judge said, wait a minute. He turned to the camel driver and he said, what say you? And the camel driver said, I did not mean to kill the orchard man. It was an accident. He killed my lead camel, my favorite. I did not mean to kill him. It was an accident. Please accept the gold money. Accept the blood money. And the son said, no, we don't want your blood money. We want your life. Life for life. Blood for blood. Death for death. The judge, he turned to the camel driver and said, I'm sorry, they don't want a blood man, they want your life. You have to forfeit your life. The judge snapped his finger and out came the executioner holding a long, can you say long? Long. That's not long enough. <laughs> for execution with a prayer mat in his hands and he rolled down the prayer mat and he told the camel driver say your last prayers water was brought he washed his hands he washed his ears he washed his face and nose and he lay down and as he started to pray he said hold oh, on judge hold oh, on judge am I not a condemned man and the judge said yes you are well if I'm a condemned man don't I have uh, uh, one uh, final request? And the judge said, yes, you do. Well, uh, my request is, uh, 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 please, may I go home for three days and three nights? And the judge said, what? May I go home for three days and three nights? The judge said, that's, that's impossible. Well, if there's anybody, anybody in the crowd who can stand for you, then you are free to go home. And the man, he didn't know anybody in this village. So he tried, uh, anybody who wants to stand for me, I am going for three days and three nights. I promise I'll be back. I promise I will be back. I promise I will be back. And the people, they laughed and they booed him and said, hey, accept your fate. Just accept your fate and die. I promise I'll be back. But an old man in the back of the crowd came walking and said, I will. And the old man, he walked. And the judge said, old man, wait a minute. Do you know what you are accepting? If this man does not return, you forfeit your life. The old man said, yes, I know. So you understand? He said, yes, I do. And the judge said, camel driver, take only one camel. We will see you in three days and three nights. And the old man was shackled and thrown into the dungeon. First night, with the mice and darkness. Second night, with the mice and darkness. And third night, with the mice and darkness. The camel driver did not show up. On the fourth day, the camel driver did not show up. 
and the judge knew justice had uh, to be dispensed. And so he said, bring out the old man. And they brought the old man in shackles and set him before the judge. And they said, old man, said the judge to the old man, I'm sorry you put your trust on the wrong man. The camel driver is not coming back. I'm sorry, you have to lose your life. And he snapped his finger. And the executioner came back holding a what? Law! That's not that. Holding a what? Law! Shiny sword sharpened for execution. With a prayer mat. And he spread this prayer mat. And he told the old man, Say your prayers. Get ready to meet your maker. And the old man, water was brought. He washed his hands. He washed his face and his nose. He lay down. And he pulled the hair from the back of his head and said, Make it a clean kill. One blow. And the executioner, he lifted up the sharp sword and put it on the back, neck of the old man. He lifted it once and he put it back again. He lifted it again twice and he rested it for the third time. When he was about to, to strike at the blow, somebody said, look, 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 look. Someone is coming. And they, everybody they turned towards the others and they could see somebody galloping on a camel. And said, someone is coming. And his face was covered. And a big cloud of dust. And he came galloping. This person came uh, frantically and he stopped in front of the car. He jumped down from the camel and he went through the crowd and he told the old, old man, you don't have to die. Get up. And he picked the old man. He opened his face. And people said, oh, it was the camel driver. He had come back and they would say, How foolish is this man? He came back? Why would he come back? And he said, Old man, you don't have to die. I am here. I'm sorry I'm late, but I am here. He knelt down before the mat. Water was brought. He washed his hands, washed his hands, and said, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. And he lay down. And the judge said, Wait, wait a minute. What just happened here? Wait a minute. What just happened here? Camel driver, where did you go? And why did you come back? And the camel driver said, Your Honor, in the village where I come from, an old widow entrusted me with that treasure. And I died in this village without restoring those treasures back to her. I would have been known as a thief and my children's children and grandchildren, the seven generations, would have been known as thieves. But I'm not a thief. So I went back to restore the treasures to the old widow. But before I came, my son did not want me to leave. My son was crying and holding on to me. And I sang songs and lullabies and put him down to sleep. And then I held my wife for one last time. And we played Korakidi for one last time. And I came as fast as I could. And that's why I'm here. And the guy said, wait a minute, old man. Why did you offer to stand in the gap for the camel driver? And the old man said, well, your honor, I was brought up to know that a man's word is his honor. If a man says something, he means it. And I was ready to die than to live in a world where a man's word is not his honor. I'd rather die than to live in that world. And the judge said, me too. I was brought up in a world where without compassion, there is no true justice. Without justice, there is no compassion. 
And that's why I'm saying this. No one is going to die tonight. He turned to the two sons of the orchard man and said, you will accept blood man, won't you? And the two sons said, your majesty, your honor, we will accept blood man. We realize that this camel driver is an honorable man and we don't want his life to go because of an accidental death. And the judge invited the four men into his chambers and the gold was weighed and tea was brought and pomegranate wine was brought and the five men sat in the, in the, in, in the chambers of the judge drinking tea, drinking chai and enjoying pomegranate wine as they talked about life death and justice There are many more stories, but because of time, just go to Fishmonger Stories, subscribe. We have over 30 stories for children, stories for adults, inspirational stories, general audience, and enjoy with your family. And because I've shared this story to, with you, it, it belongs to you now. You don't have to tell it like I do, yeah. but tell it in your own way and share it and let this story be told. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.